Welcome to the Pit Stop Ranch. We're there. Only thing more annoying than not being able to make progress on existing project is when a former project and current daily has to starts having a few minor issues. Now, a little bit of background to add some flavor to this. Last few weeks, a few weeks ago, we started getting ready to go to the Pomona swap meet, which meant we had to stop working on Jimmy and start working on a couple other items, particularly BJ, to prepare them that and get the other parts ready to go to haul to the swap meet. Then, of course, last weekend was a swap meet, and um, that gobbled up basically, even though it was a one-day event, took gobbled up the whole weekend. Well, in the meantime, trusty old C10 here started a bog under power. <clears throat> Initially, it was on a, uh, it was a relatively rare instance, and I thought it had more to do with uh, fuel slosh in the fuel tank. So I'd um, go ahead and top off the gas whenever that happened. But the problem was, last time I did it, the tank only took five gallons. It's like a 25 gallon tank. And since then, pretty much any time I get into it, it bogs. And if I stay in it, it comes back. But then it bogs again. Which <clears throat> seems to be a very clear indication that there's a fuel delivery problem. And it's not throwing a code. It's not, you know, signaling misfire or anything. It's just sudden loss of power. Anyways. The other issue on trusty old C10 here is the gas gauge has never worked. And in fact, I have filmed myself <clears throat> on about three different occasions trying to work through it and diagnose why the fuel gauge doesn't work. It comes up to, well, initially it went up to three quarters of a tank and it always sat at three quarters of a tank. <clears throat> then that changed to always being like seven eighths of a tank, almost a full tank and sitting there. And then now it's sitting right at three eighths of a tank and always sitting there. Um, and I found a number of wiring issues and corrected them in the process. But since it's never actually fixed the problem, I, I haven't, there's no video there. Well, between the bog and the fuel uh, gauge issue. Um, I think it's time to pull the gas, the bed, <clears throat> and get to the get to the access to the top of the fuel tank. Now, you might ask why uh, I don't just drop the tank. And to be honest with you, it's because there's 20 gallons of fuel in it, at least 25 gallons of fuel in it. And um, then you got to deal with the lines and the, the everything else. And though there's flex lines with slop enough to actually drop the tank all the way to the ground without tweaking any lines, blah, blah, blah. I think, uh, honestly, because of both issues, it'll be easier to uh, actually pull the bed. So that's today's project, pull the bed. Yay. The way this bed is constructed, it's of course a hodgepodge of the uh, 98 Dually Crew Cab that the frame is from and the 1970 C10 with which the body is from. The bed frame is bolted to the, uh, the bed floor is bolted to the frame with six bolts. And then of course, then the bed sides fit around the bed floor. So I need to do pull the bumper, disconnect the wiring, and pull the step sides. And once I do those, then it's a matter of just cribbing it up. Just a matter. As you can tell, I'm excited. Really, really excited.
Okay, so for all of you out there who are wondering, you know who you are. This is what it looks like under my C10. Um, uh, for any of you who actually are experts in C10 ridge, you will instantly recognize, of course, as I have already described, this frame is actually for a dually crew cab one ton 98. Much more of a jo up jog in the frame, much thicker section, much wider spacing on the frame. Anyway, you can see some of the stuff I've previously already shown. Um, i.e. the exhaust, the, the, the axle setup, um, my um, uh, the um, trailer ha hitch, how it's mounted, and everything. Anyway, what we're after today, or what we're after on this project, is, is to pull this out and take a look at what the heck is going on. Also, we'll here notice that this little connector here you can't see is wet so it looks like it's weeping a little bit of gas that is the low pressure return line so we're fortunately that's not you know a huge deal so we'll be able to get a wrench in there and snug that up good bit should be able to seal it so um next step is to pull this turkey apart and go from there As you can see, this is the top of the gas tank, which I've already been exposed to. <clears throat> now, this is GM quick disconnect fuel lines, which was uh, developed, I don't know when it was developed, but it was popular at least sometime in the late 90s through present, I think. Um, now, these, of course, are your um, connectors. There we go. And <clears throat> this quick disconnectors are, this is an adapter that converts it to standard AN. And that's what these are. And then they come around and a solid tube. Um, now I've, the return line's got a little bit of a weep to it, so I'm going to snug that up before we go much further, just because that would want to handle that. Now we will find out what kind of shape this stuff is in. I've had lots of visions of building it big horsepower with it. And um, I. Um, It's empty. What the fuck? All right, mystery solved. There's nothing wrong with the fuel pump. Nothing at all wrong with the fuel pump. Yeah. Now. Huh, then we can know why uh, we're missing a float. Okay, this is not going to move without a uh, float, so I need to figure out what's going on, where the float is, and then mount it. Other thing is, of course, let me show you, it's out of gas. That is the bottom. It is completely out of gas. It is...
Okay, well, everything's back, bolted back up, wires are hooked up, um, ready to go. Uh, next step is to finish filling up the gas tank and um, drive it, see what happens. Now, <clears throat> I put, I filled two five, I put two five gallon cans in it, so probably nine and a half gallons of actual gasoline. And the gas gauge now reads full, so. We will watch it and see if it comes down at all, but uh, it's like a 27 gallon tank. So um, that that is very frustrating. Um, I'm glad that I didn't have to do anything regarding the um, fuel pump itself. The fuel, fuel pump seems to be just fine, especially since that was a high dollar whiz bang aftermarket thing that I didn't don't actually need at this point because of the change of plans, but it's in there and it's good, so that's nice. Um, anyway, uh, uh, we are professionals, just not at this. So uh, uh, leave a comment about our creative uses of um, engine cranes and um, and uh, stupidity on um, <clears throat> not filling the gas tank. To be fair, the stupid pump kicked off like three times real quick, rapidly, like it was full and gas was dribbling out, like uh, it was full, even though it was empty. So, anyways, such is life. Till next time, please subscribe, share, hit the like button, and hit the notification bell. And I'll see you later.